Hey guys, this video is brought to you by AerospacePal.com. We deliver free content tailored specifically to the aerospace community. Come check out the site. Hey man, we're here talking about Section 22 of D160, Lightning Induced Transient Susceptibility, aka Induced Lightning. And specifically, we're going to be talking about cable bundle testing. Now during this test, we're going to inject a transient waveform on each bundle of your EUT. The purpose of this test is to simulate the energy from a lightning strike that will be induced onto your cable and represented on each bundle of your product. Now the categories for section 22 consist of six characters. The first two call out the pin injection waveform set and test levels. The second set or the third and fourth characters refer to the single and multiple stroke waveform set and level. And finally the last two characters determine the multiple burst waveform set and multiple burst level. Your waveform sets are typically determined by one of two things. One, if you have shielded bundles in your aircraft wiring harness and two, the structure of the aircraft in your product location. If you have any shields in your bundle, you'll likely test to a shielded waveform set, meaning you'll have current waveform test levels and voltage limits. If you have unshielded bundles, it's just the opposite. You'll be testing to voltage waveforms, meaning voltage test levels and current limits. Aircraft structure also plays a role. If the aircraft near your product is metal, metal framework with composite skin, or carbon fiber composite with mesh metal skin, then the test set should be aperture coupled waveforms. Similarly, if the aircraft structure near your product is made from carbon fiber composite without metal mesh protection, you'll likely test to the aperture resistance coupled waveforms. This is explained in section 22.3.1 and listed in table 22-1. Now let's have a look at the waveforms. If we look at waveform 5B and 5A, these are the longest and have the most energy in them. Waveform 4 and waveform 1 follow as the second longest, with waveform 4 being a voltage waveform and waveform 1 being a current waveform. Next are waveform 2 and 6, waveform 2 being a voltage waveform and 6 being a current waveform. Last, waveform 3 is a damped sinusoid of 1 MHz and 10 MHz for cable bundle. Note that it's just tested in the 1 MHz for pin injection. In this example, we see that B3 is the waveform set and level. F4 is the single stroke and multiple stroke waveform set and level, with L3 being the multiple burst waveform set and level. Looking at waveform set F for single stroke and multiple stroke, we need to test to waveforms 3 and 5A. Using level 4 for our waveform test level, we can see single stroke is tested at 1500 volts and 300 amps, while waveform 5A is tested at 750 volts and 2000 amps. For waveform 3, the first stroke in multiple stroke is tested at 1500 volts and 300 amps, while the subsequent strokes are tested at 750 volts and 150 amps. Likewise, waveform 5A is tested at 300 volts, 800 amps for the first stroke, while subsequent strokes are tested at 150 volts and 400 amps. And last, category L3 for multiple burst specifies that we'll test waveform 3 to level 3. Okay, now that we have our category and test levels down, let's talk about calibration. Now assuming we're testing to a voltage waveform, we need to calibrate our setup as shown in this figure. We'll test the open circuit voltage to make sure our voltage level is achieved per the category tested. We'll also need to ensure that the voltage waveform and the timing requirements match the waveform shown in figures 22.1 through 22.8. After achieving voltage with the loop in the open circuit configuration, the loop should be closed to test the short circuit configuration. The generator should be set to the same test level that achieved voltage limit. The current seen during this test does not need to reach the current limit, but is merely an indicator of how much power your transient generator and clamp is delivering. If you are running a current waveform, achieve current level and record the voltage limit using the same method to find VOC limit and ISC level. The test setup for cable bundle is pretty straightforward as shown here. The current monitor needs to be 5 to 15 centimeters away from the EUT connector and the injection clamp needs to be 5 to 50 centimeters away from the current monitor. The voltage monitor is an open circuit loop around the injection clamp. As an example, this setup shows two bundles assuming the power lead is routed separate from the interface bundle in the aircraft. In this example, the waveform sets would be applied to each bundle. It also assumes a locally bonded return which is not tested as part of any bundle. 
If the return is not locally bonded, then it needs to be tested as part of the power bundle. Getting to the test, we need to turn on the EUT and let it stabilize. The test engineer will start by setting the transient generator at a low level, typically lower than the calibration level. They will monitor both the voltage and the current while applying the first pulse. After seeing the first pulse, they'll increase the generator until they reach the test level, whether it's voltage or current. Once they hit the first pulse, it can be counted as 1 of 10 required indirect lightning pulses. You can have no more than 1 minute between pulses for single stroke and 5 minutes for multiple stroke. You will need to inject 10 pulses in the positive and negative polarity in all modes of operation for your EUT. Now multiple burst is a little bit different. You're going to apply the burst application specified by the figure below every three seconds lasting continuously for five minutes. Unlike pin injection, this test evaluates the functional upset as well as the damage tolerance. Monitor your EUT during this test and ensure that you pass. You've just gotten through the second half of D160 section 22 indirect lightning cable bundle. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you found this informative, interesting, or just better than reading a 500 page standard, stop back at aerospacepal.com and tell other engineers about this free resource. Don't have a copy of D160? Check out the link below.